<laughs> and we're live. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Brain Candy Podcast, episode 279. Sarah. Oh, I almost rhymed, but <gasps> wait, I may have what? accidentally rhymed. Wait, how did you? Because you said 279, and then I went, <gasps> I may have accidentally rhymed. <laughs> I didn't you mean to. You can't stop. Don't hold it against me. I can't. How really. are you today? Oh, I'm doing well. The sun is shining, but it's deceptive because it's fucking freezing out here. Sorry, I know. Linda. We we were looking at our pool, and it looked so inviting. Yeah. <laughs> like, it would not be if you took no, a, it's put your freezing. toe in there. No good. No way. No. I'm cold. I oh, was my gosh. Th- and... No, go ahead. No, I was telling Adam I wanted to do one of those polar dips on, like, New Year's Day or whatever, where you jump in and you're, like, freezing. What are you insane? This is like well, the last those, thing on the planet I want to do. <laughs> you know those things like in different cities where people jump yeah. in like icy waters. Right. And it's supposed to be like really good for your body. In Finland, they like do it all the time. Did you ever see that uh, Tony Robbins documentary where he has one of these dunk pools in his house and he does it every day? That makes sense for Tony Robbins. What do you think? Am I supposed guy? to be? I was. Oh, my gosh, Suze. I was just going to. I was wanted to talk to you about this because... That keeps coming up as like, oh, you should watch this on my Netflix documentary things. It's good. I think I think I should. Like, I don't know why I've been kind of like put him into this like kind of culty category. But well, that's why you should watch it, though. Based on what I've seen, it seems amazing. Well, that's why you need to watch it, though, because I want to know what your opinion is after you watch it, whether you think yeah, he's a culty that. guy or whether it's like good, good stuff. My, here's my impression from having zero background information and nothing to base it on. <laughs> Uh, uh, I wonder if it would be as effective if it, well, it wouldn't. I think it's effective because it's a man preaching this stuff. I feel like the only person who can, I can think can even come close is Oprah. And I don't think that I just, I feel like the messages that he's, or at least what I saw in the previews, a lot of what he's saying are things that your therapist would tell you. Things mm-hmm. that, you know, are very female, like, you are not your problems. Like, you are, like, I love you for you, and I look at you, and I see somebody who could be amazing, and whatever. I'm like, that's what your mom tells you, you know? Like, that's what women say talk all the time, and I feel like because it's being delivered from a man in, in this very, like, almost... I don't know, over the top aggressive way. Maybe yes. not aggressive. That's the wrong word. No, it but is like, the right word. He's super aggressive and he swears at them and like drops the F bomb all the time yeah, and Linda yeah. would hate it. Oh my gosh. That's and so funny. it's like um <laughs> super it's almost like it too aggressive for me. It's over the top. Yeah. I but ooh, people like Yeah, it. I don't respond well to that. But I think some people really do. Like that, you mean? Yes. Some people, like, need to be yelled at? Yes. <laughs> Not yelled at, but they need, like, a wake-up call. And it has to be, I don't know, maybe a little more confrontational. In therapy, they call it caring confrontation. No. Yes. It's an actual You mean you're supposed to do it? Well, I mean, when necessary. It's not when the person needs it, you know? It's like, it's... And that's not really the way, you know, it's not like you're confronting them in an aggressive way, but they, it's like part of a cognitive behavioral therapy where you would provide like caring confrontation if somebody had a, an irrational belief. Really? Like maybe like a hoarder, for example. Oh, right. They need a wake up call. <laughs> Tough love. Hello. You're saving <laughs> your pee. Come on. You're hey, this ain't good. <laughs> you're saving your pee they know that though right when hoarders mm, know they shouldn't uh-uh. save their i think because Come it's on. it's one of those things where if you your mind's job is to like convince itself that it's done the right thing so yeah. it'll start creating a story justifying actions and behaviors So it'll start to say, well, here's why you had to do it. You had to do it like, think about, oh, my God, Suze. Remember the story I told you of the Kohl's item that was accidentally (laughs) shipped to me? Yes. I I feel like I should share this with people. Yes, tell them what you did, Sarah. Here's the story. Here's my shame. 
Uh, but it's okay because now I've since paid for it like tenfold. So karma's a bitch. <laughs> what else? Okay, so I got sent the, a wrong item. Like they, they, my order from like Black Friday, they sent me an Under Armour sweatshirt in triple XL. Oh my god! I'm Instead get of about this. Socks. Instead of a m- pair of men's fleece pajama pants. Oh, okay. And one was $32 and one was nine ninety nine, So I'm sitting here like, oh, my God, Black Friday's over now. None of the good sales are on. Oh, I can't. What am I going to do? I'm not just going to like, I can't. What am I going to do with a triple XL sweatshirt? And Landa would be insulted if I gave that to him. <laughs> so uh, could you imagine? He's going to be like, what? <laughs> But I'm losing weight. I'm Merry fit for Christmas. 40. Right. Oh, God. So uh, so I take it back to the store, and ugh, I did a little fib, and I said, uh, <laughs> I would like to return this, and I don't have my receipt. Now, mind you, I didn't call them and say, hey, an item is missing from my order. Please resend it. So it's like I get two for one. Really, I'm just like saving fifteen dollars. Like I get mm-hmm. a little fifteen dollar bonus. Mm-hmm. So it's then, like Cole's I, cash. Yeah. Co- totally, it's like that, which I probably used anyway. So it was like their money to begin with, and <laughs> uh, you know. And then I ended up buying like the wrong thing, and uh, uh, like ugh, I wasted the money anyway because, like, as Susie knows, I bought a pair of tights and I thought it was black, but it was really like gray and dud, dum dum dum, and I'm never going to return them. So, anyways, it was like a waste. But my whole point is that as soon as I did that, I started giving myself a list of reasons as to why it was okay. Just like I'm doing yeah. right now. Like, I started going, <laughs> okay, well, it's fine because it was only this much and I didn't return it. It's not like I did this. And that is what my brain is doing just for this one event. Imagine yeah. if it were something really, like, bizarre. Your brain starts going into self-preservation protection mode going, nope, nope, you did the right thing. You did the right thing. Here's why. So I, don't, I think they do need confrontation is my whole point. No, they definitely do. I just can't believe that they ha- – I always thought in the back of their mind they knew that this was, like, mm-hmm. disordered behavior. And I think maybe in the back of their mind they do, but in that reactive front part, it's like which yeah. part are you using, like that higher brain or lower brain? Right. Well, I mean – what it all comes down to. They could use a little something I like to call talk space. And boy, this, oh boy, <laughs> this time of year, I think a lot of people are stressed and, you know, feeling some people feel really sad this time of year and go through a lot of emotional turmoil. And Talkspace is an online therapy company that lets you message a licensed therapist from anywhere at any time, so you don't have to go to their office. And it's such a nice alternative if you have a difficult schedule or you just feel a little intimidated by the therapy experience. It's a nice introduction to talking about what's on your mind or things from your past. And you can do it from the convenience of your phone or email, what a computer. And the Talkspace platform has over 2,000 licensed therapists who are experienced in addressing life's challenges that we all friggin' face. To match with a perfect therapist for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy, go to Talkspace.com slash Brain Candy and use the code Brain Candy to get $45 off your first month and show your support for the show, that's Brain Candy and Talkspace.com slash Brain Candy. We could all use it, especially if you're hoarding yeah. like Sarah said. Yeah. I thought uh, you were going to say like Sarah. And I'm like, shh, that's just <laughs> one closet. <laughs> it's just Christmas. You decorations. don't know me. <laughs> I have um, a story for you. Tell okay. me. Lay it on me, sister. I never heard of this, but now it makes total sense. New York apparently outlawed what they're calling cyber flashing. Have you heard of this? Where Cyber flashing? Yeah. Yes, where if you have your airdrops set to public, <gasps> people are sending their dicks. Not what? Like pictures of their dicks via well, airdrop. Yeah, no, I got that. On like subways and pu- out in public to just like oh random people. So because... You know how when you get something via airdrop, yes. even if you push decline, you've already seen the dick. Oh my god, Suze, this is what this is just like when I was saying I don't like dicks on Instagram or whatever it was, <laughs> right? Because I don't want a You're surprise so right. penis in my face. Yes, it's the same. It's totally invasive and like like what you, it's flashing. 
Yes. Ooh, I hate it. Yes. And like and to think if you were children. on. Yes. That's a good point because you don't know who you're sending it to. Like, no, you they... don't. And ugh. yeah, come on. Yeah. So like if you're sitting on the subway or on the bus or something and your settings allow for anybody to airdrop you, someone could mm. just randomly send you their, their dick and balls. What would you do? Would you what stand you- up and start yelling or what? Oh, that's interesting because it's like somebody there close yeah. to you. Mm. You could be no, like, whose gosh, dick no, is this? No, I would do the opposite. Based on what I know when I get confronted with yeah. any sort of like, I would freeze and turn into a little girl. Me too. That's Me too. so goddamn annoying. And you know the worst part? And this is where the power comes from. This is what it's all about. It's not about showing the penis or whatever. I'm thinking about that moment. I would spend the rest of the day, if not week, if not more than that, thinking about how I was like, it would just pop into my head, you know? Yeah. Not like the terrorizing. So, yeah. So it's a power thing. It's that that person now lives in your head for however long. You know what? By the way, you're so right because I don't think we ever followed up on the fact that you were right about the person that was putting pins in the strawberries. They caught what, what, the person. Me. Yeah. Well, and you knew you go. That sounds like it was a it was a woman, and you <gasps> were right. Oh, dude. <sighs> yep. Am I good or am I good? You are, because you were like that's a we a very specific like I forget yep. the word you used, but yeah, that describes the desire to harm but like without that immediate reward of like whatever yeah. the perverts oh god yeah. i don't know what that one's called but yeah man yeah. i knew it was a woman and i, I feel like i mean 50 50 this- shot but you know <laughs> yeah but you i would have never thought of that and you definitely yeah. like most people when they think of a criminal they think of a man so it's not right. exactly 50 50 correct um and like mm-hmm. when you're talking about the cyber flashing and you're like it's not about the dick it's about them being in your head i think that you're yeah. onto something there oh Suze, i love when you tell me i'm right it's like i'm like <laughs> i'm like getting tears. turned on over here <laughs> I'm like whoa am i ovulating or is it just Susie telling me i'm right wait here's another weird thing <laughs> that's hilarious another weird thing to me though is how i t- think a lot and studies uh serial killers and, yeah. you know, a lot of people are like, it's funny how we don't have as many these days. And I always talk about how technology has really limited people's ability to not get caught. But oddly, in this case, flashing is now oh. easier because of technology. Yeah. So I would imagine voyeurism is as well. Yes. And like the those, ew, ew, ew. Like the motel guy. Yes. Did, oh God, I'm sure I said this story on here before, but I dated a guy who worked for Homeland Security and <sighs> I'm, I moved in the meantime. Like he, I, uh, uh, so while we were together, I moved into a new apartment and I go into the new apartment and like, I call him, I'm talking to him on the phone and I'm like, Oh, moving in so fun, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, did you check for bugs? And I was like, funny oh, you say that. What? There was like a palmetto bug in my kitchen and <laughs> I do need to get an exterminator. He's like, no, dummy. But like video cameras and shit. And I never in a million years had that thought that there's a chance that I rent an apartment from somebody and it could be bugged. Like well, it could have cameras in it. But this is something that freaking happens. And he's not saying that because, you know, he was a paranoid person. He's saying that because he knows from his own job experience. Well, what, how, did, how am I supposed to check for that though? Who knows? That's what I'm, I'm like. What do I need? One of those little wands, like they sweep the. I don't fucking know. I need like the find my iPhone, but for like bugs. I don't even know how that works. That, I didn't even I, think of the, that kind of bug. I like. I totally talked about for how there was like a cockroach in my house. I was like, that's weird that you say that. I maybe I should get an exterminator. It's like, oh Ugh. god. Well, I mean, you could check for that, or you could go outside your door and check and see if you got a Fab Fit Fun box. Oh, that would be way better. That would be way better than being bugged. Way better. Oh, I want to say something about my FabFitFun box. Thank yes. God for what I got because I think I was the only person in Southern California who had an umbrella in the back of their car when we had the torrential <laughs> downpours the other week. So thank you, FabFitFun. That's right because we were out when it was raining and you were like, hey, I have an umbrella. I'm like, what? 
Yep. You're like, yeah, it came in my Fat Fit Fun box. Yep. Didn't know how to work it for the first few times, but <laughs> then I got the hang of it. Shut up. No, for real. I had some trouble. I didn't know like proper, like, oh Suze, God. I've used an umbrella. Like I can count the amount of times I've used an umbrella on two hands. Maybe one. That makes me sick. Yeah, I mean, you know. it. it I don't even know, like, if I've ever actually bought an umbrella because they're just everywhere in Pittsburgh, and when you need one, you just pick it up or from the door <laughs> oh and just my take God, it. That's so funny! Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. Hopefully, if you got your Fat Fit Fun seasonal subscription box, you'll get an umbrella. I got a beautiful blanket. I got tons of full size makeup and um, beauty products and things like that. They have full size stuff, no samples, and it's such a great value because the value of the box is really high, and this is super cheap and affordable. But makes a great gift. I'm super into giving this to like the teacher in your life, or the, your sister, or your mom, or somebody that wants to be pampered or deserves a little break. Sign up for FabFitFun today. FabFitFun boxes are amazing. They always sell out. Use our code BrainCan and you get ten dollars off your first box. Go to FabFitFun.com to sign up and start getting the box for a life well lived. Use promo code BRAINCANDY to get $10 off your first box. That's over $200 for only $39.99. Go to FabFitFun.com and use my code BRAINCANDY to get $10 off your first FabFitFun box. It's a good deal. Yeah, yeah, dog. Yeah, so that's freaking me out about this cyber. Uh, Definitely change your settings, though, if you have yours to set. I am going to. Yeah. I think I have it set to only people who are in your contacts. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yeah, that's safe. Eek. Dude. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, uh, we wow. <laughs> and then on a similar note, I read today that um, Starbucks is finally blocking people from watching porn there. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe this. Oh, Who's doing there, that? Well, there was an episode that show that I love, Broad City. There was an episode, like, they always are, you know, jokey and everything and real, like, campy and, and I don't even know what the word is, but uh, they're hilarious. And there's one scene where they're, like, in a coffee shop and they make a reference to that where they're like, can you believe it? Like, somebody in here who's not watching porn. And then she's like, wait, what do you mean? What? And then they, they, they cut from t- screen to screen of everybody who's sitting there and like have it blurred. The screen's blurred. And it's like every single what? person who's in the coffee shop is watching porn. So maybe this is like a thing on the DL that like I didn't even know about because I don't live in a city where people like frequent coffee. Sh- it's not like New York or, you know, a more suburban or a, a urban city. Like wait I'm just a minute. Boonies, okay. Or- Break this down for me, though, because I don't get yeah. it. Okay. People are going into coffee shops, yeah. watching porn, but yeah. they can't be masturbating. I don't know. I no, Obviously not. No. I would say no. So how is that, that pleasurable? Is. I don't know. Maybe it's like, I don't know. Sue, so, so <laughs> you're asking the, like me like I'm going to know no. an answer. No, no, no. Maybe I, I just... should Google this. <laughs> I just want to know your theory. I... For this one, I mean, I almost put it in the same category, but it's not really the flashing. It's more like a, maybe it's like, uh, uh, what do you call it when you have sex in public? It's kind of like voyeurism, but it's not really. That's more like on display. What do you call oh, that? Oh, yeah. Exhibitionism. What's exhibitionism. Maybe it's like that. Okay. Why are people watching i'm googling oh this <laughs> but that makes no there's kids and stuff and like that is oh, not okay and who are these people that's what i don't get and why aren't they embarrassed i mean there's a whole thing on like a reddit starbucks thing oh my that says God. uh what to do about customers watching porn in your cafe holy crow are they people so that apparently don't have this internet is a thing. at home oh what if but I mean, good night. If you have a computer, I, oh, or is it on their phones? They're doing it. Oh, I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. I don't know why this is We a thing. don't know enough. I have no, like, really, I can't, I can't, and everything, uh, okay, Forbes says who even, yeah, yes, uh, who that's what we even need. is watching corn, corn, who even is watching <laughs> porn at Starbucks? Oh, okay. I don't know. Well, and then I click on it, and it says the connection is not private. So I that's just can't weird. believe that they go figure. It took them this long to ban that. Did or did it take them this long to realize it was happening? So 
all over the place. And then as soon as they did, they're like, whoa, we got to stop this. I mean, if that was happening around me, I would not be okay. I would tell the manager. (laughs) So here's my question. Yes. Do all of these, is this, is this something where like, say, mm, I'm going to call these individuals. Oh, is it fair to call them sexual deviants? I mean, I think they are, but you're usually more forgiving. I know, but I almost feel like stuff that violates social yes. mm, norms would in be public considered. for sure. In public, okay, we'll call them sexual deviants. So, like, and even like flashers, all that kind of stuff. Does easy access or like more? Hmm, how do I put this? Like a, a world that caters more to those behaviors help those individuals not act out in more violent ways, right. or do you think? It adds to it, and it, I, like, is fuel for the fire. I believe it's fuel. Ooh! But then I think about, like, repression <laughs> of anything causes it to, like, get to a boiling point. Kind of like how that serial killer said it's like having to go to the bathroom, and you can only hold it yeah. for so long. Well, what if, like, you got to go to the bathroom a little bit every now and then? Okay, but I feel like the porn industry is, like, if you have to go to the bathroom, and then someone, like, pours water right next to you. So then you really have to uh. go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think you're right too. That kind because of because abstaining from that leads to mm-hmm. like a rebuilding of all of like it 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 de- it sensitizes you as well, opposed I to was, desensitizes you. And I was reading this article about how um, terrifying it is for people that work in the hotel industry, like um, housekeepers. Because there's so many people now that watch that kind of porn where like it's like voyeurism and then um, they think that they can just like whip it out when the housekeeper. Right. And so they're, some hotels are giving housekeepers like call buttons, like emergency call buttons. Oh my God. Let's not say they, let's just say men, because this is not women who are (laughs) vigorously masturbating to the help. I love how you said vigorously. The Sarah, only way I imagine them doing it. Sarah, you're so right. Yes, yes, but I feel so... Always okay, seems so, frantic when they're... You know, you, you know how people got mad at us when we talked about happy endings? but Because it, yeah. it endangers massage therapists if, if men especially, you know, sort of see it as a... You know, right. a green light oh, to point, whatever. Point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, right, respect and consent first and foremost. Obviously, I've got um, a story. I've got a story that's in the category of, um, hmm, attraction. Wait, okay, hold that thought because okay. what I am attracted to is a really sleek, gorgeous toothbrush. Oh, and I'm attracted to clean white teeth. So two for one. <laughs> <laughs> there is okay this is my idea quip is the perfect stocking stuffer i am telling oh, all duh. my friends get i just told um my friend kelly because she was asking me about them i'm like get them for your kids because kids yeah. toothbrushes are so ugly and these are so cute and lincoln loves his they can and pick it's the not color. bulky like a regular yeah. big one and the color can match and it's timed so that they can learn how long they need to brush their teeth and in yeah. what spots and he will not stop until that two minutes is up, which sometimes is annoying to me, but it's probably <laughs> good for his teeth. Quip toothbrushes look great. They stick to the mirror, but they come off easily so you can clean it. They pack up to travel super nice, and you can pick the color you want. Um, and then they send you refill heads every three months for five bucks. So it's great because you don't have to think about how often to replace it. That's why we love Quip and why they have over 5,000 verified five-star reviews. Quip looks like a big-ticket tech gift with stocking stuffer price. Start at just $25, and if you go to getquip.com slash brain candy right now, you'll get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush, but you don't have to tell your giftee that. That's your first refill pack for at um, getquip.com slash brain candy. Okay, tell me your story. All right, so... This is a story about something that we use to lure or attract the opposite sex that was lured to attract something else. Did you okay. hear about the tiger in India that had killed 12 people? No. 
Okay, so there's a tiger in India that's like roaming around. They've named this tiger T T one. It's a female, and she has two cubs that are hunting with her. And she's killed twelve people so far, and they cannot catch this tiger. I mean, she's outmaneuvered everything. They even used like horses and goats and tied them to trees as bait to try to trap this tiger with like nothing. She somehow like gets away or gets out of the traps. But there is one thing that successfully has caught multiple tigers, and now they're going to use to catch this one. You will never in a million years guess what it is. Give me Perfume. like a, a... Oh, you guessed it! No, you're lying! Susie, that's it. It's Calvin Klein's obsession. <gasps> what? Yes! Oh, you know, I set you up with the obsession to track, track or the uh, uh, thing. To, <laughs> I didn't uh, know it was Calvin Klein's obsession. Oh, so <laughs> this is like the co- it's a real interesting thing. So there's this, there's a, uh, you know, like perfumes. They use these odors or these fragrances that come from really bizarre places sometimes. And there's an ingredient called civet that's from a civet cat. It's like a scent that's released when this thing, the cat, marks its territory. And it's extremely um, alluring for tigers. Like tigers and members of the cat family are very attracted to the scent and will come from miles away to sniff it out. What? And so, yeah, can you believe that? And so there's, they're in uh, Calvin Klein's obsession. There's like a high concentration of this with a balance of other fragrances that they call it Civitone. It's like a synthetic version of this that is the only thing um, that works. So there's this a study that was done at the Bronx Zoo, and it says tr- cats are attracted to certain scents in the perfume. And it, there was a leopard that was killing people in another city, and in 2013 <laughs> they used that same perfume to lure a leopard. And they tested it against Chanel Number no. Five and <laughs> jo- Jovan Musk or Joven Musk. I don't even know how to say that. And uh, CK Obsession was numero uno for n- nabbing the tigers. <laughs> Wait a for minute. grabbing the grabbing the large pussy cats. <laughs> I know this is not the point of your story, but I do want to know. Like, isn't it the case that they normally wouldn't attack unless you were like coming close to their kids? Oh, and like, the she what is did, with why the cubs? is it killing twelve people? I think it's more like urban sprawl because the cities oh. have have expanded out into yeah. areas that you know were not lived in by humans before that they're coming closer because their food sources are so scarce. It's kind of like coyotes in California. Their food sources are running out. So they're coming and starting to eat human food and they're getting more and more comfortable with the humans. They're starting to wear our perfume. They're starting to wear our perfume. (laughs) Oh my God. Next thing you know, one of them will be rolling around naked in a black and white commercial on the beach. I I would love to know if that perfume sales have dipped in India. Because who's going to buy it? Nobody. Oh, my God. Because then what if a tiger's attracted to you? (laughs) Right. God, you end up getting mauled just because, you know, you wanted to smell fresh? That is so bizarre. And, like, how would they even figure that out? I guess because it has that chemical in it, right? Yeah. It's that civet. Well, and then the weird part is they said that this this, mm, fragrance or odor or whatever smells like straight up doo-doo in its concentrated form. Like they said, they said poop. No. They're like, it smells like poop. They called it fecal floral. What? Yeah. And it's, when it's concentrated, it smells awful. But when it's diluted, it has nice floral notes. That is weird. That's probably one of the only stinky things that when diluted has nice floral notes because nothing going it's on like, in this house. <laughs> it's like poopery. Right? Oh my god. <laughs> but poopery just smells like rose flavored poo after a little while. I have to switch up the fragrances like monthly cuz I get it smells That's gross. right because then it starts you associate it with poop, yes. right? And lemongrass was ruined for me. So now I'm like on a ro- I, I, That's so funny you mentioned that because I went out and bought the new Christmas like holiday scent last night because I'm like, I got it. Holiday, I gotta, I, holiday scent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, because I know there, you know, those people that um, light matches after they shit. Yes, I do. Well, then I think they start to associate the smell of a match with 
it. Wow. And I that watched seems the whole. Like, uh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I just feel like that's a real shame because I love the smell of a burning match. Oh yeah. I don't. You know, I'm that person who lights a match. You know. And if need be, hmm. Sure. Uh, if I'm eating enough fiber that week. Uh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I still like the smell of matches. And I don't oh, think, you know, okay. I watched a whole Mythbusters on uh, what that does. Whether it like <laughs> What is the, the scoop? I'm so excited to find yeah, out. Yeah, isn't that cool? So yeah. what I thought it did was there was something about the, like, I don't know what happens when you spark it, like that chemical reaction that then like yeah. eats up the particles in the air. So it like neutralizes it. Cause yeah. it's almost that, like, that's what it seems like it does. No, it really is just a masking of the odor. It's no. not, this, the particles are all still there. Poo particles oh as I love to refer to them. I cannot believe that actually. Yeah. They did the test and everything. And I was shocked too. That, cause that was not their hypothesis. They thought the same thing that we did. What? And, did they yeah. call them poo particles? Maybe that might be where <laughs> I I learned that that little old saying. Because what does that even mean? What's a poo particle? Like particles of poo, like 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 scent, like anything that has a scent has some oh, sort okay. of like density to it. You know, it's yeah, like right. the molecules that come together to form that odor. You know, it's Gross. like I don't even know what the sulfur. And and so that was what I was thinking it did is that it like somehow the sulfur got. Yeah. Like used in the explosion or what little match lighting or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Explosion. Whatever. A little mini thing. But no, not the case. It just covers it. So some, that's why sometimes you need two and what else. Well, then why don't you just keep on using matches if you still like it instead of buying holiday because, poopery? Because I feel like I go, th- you know, you'd go through way too many matches. <laughs> And then, like, what do you do with the match afterwards? You got like throw it in the toilet, like a new match every. That's a lot of matches. And poop How much is like are a hunt. A hunting. Well, daily. That <laughs> right? There's two people in this house. I love that. Like, you had to stop using matches because there were just like so many. No. <laughs> okay, that's a good point. <laughs> that's my favorite. But I it's get like, okay, your point. Okay. So, like, okay, a week. So say a week goes by and you got 14 little used matches or maybe you have like 24 yeah. little new used matches because it's wow. the holidays and we're eating extra. And uh, then what? Like they're in the trash can and like all – like I'm scared of putting matches in the trash yeah, can because I'm scared it's going to like light the trash on fire. So yeah. like somebody will make a – like, you know, leave the match on the toilet and I just don't want that. So then there's like a whole pile of matches and like I don't know. What up, Suze? I like the smell of potpourri. Okay. <laughs> You know, when I, you know how we've been talking about us going to like antique shops, our family lately. Yeah. 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 You know what? It's funny to me that you can buy like those basically people collect matches and you can buy like entire collections, but they're hundreds of dollars. Yeah. But I don't get those matchbooks are, those are like expensive. I mean, I think I guess they're collector's items. Yeah. Yeah. They really are. And then I think some of them are are rare you know anything that's like rare or that's disposable that normally people would just throw away like you keep yeah. those things right 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 I don't well know. i mean if you are pooping a lot or you want to poop a lot i think the answer might be for you to get some ritual vitamins these mm, are make them healthier poos yeah make some healthy poos these are my now go-to i take them every day Same. they uh, yeah they have the essential for women and it has all the stuff that women lack and they taste like mint and don't make you sick. I mean, that's basically all you need to know about them because that's been my problem with multivitamins all along. Um, they have D3, they have omega-3, and basically fill in the gap if you're not eating what you should, which that's most of us. And no fishy aftertaste. Ew, gross, hate that. And now they have a prenatal, which is so great. <gasps> what? Yeah, oh, if that's you're lovely. thinking about getting preggers or your preggers, yes. these are a great option for that. They send them right to your door, so it's an easy subscription. You I won't even have that. to think about it. Um, oh, my God, only... they don't taste bad? They won't make you puke? Exactly. That... Oh, I am definitely going to get that. Yes. Whether you're living life or creating it, why not add some good-looking science into your daily routine? Visit ritual.com slash brain candy to start your ritual today. That's ritual.com slash brain candy. I mean, no brainer on that one. I mean, I love our sponsors. 
Me too. They're I'm all, always I just saying was thinking this. about like Christmas is like my favorite because I'm like, oh, I got this deal. I got this deal. I'm going to use this. I'm going to get Jordan some liquid IV. <laughs> you know, so. Do you have people asking you like if we really mean it? Because that happens to me all the time. No, not really. Because I think a lot of the products <laughs> that, I, that I've really shared that I love on here, other friends of mine have also loved. Like Mod Cloth. Like, yeah. I've got a whole bunch of friends who wear those like that style of clothing and i mean everybody so they already know yeah they they already know and they're like oh my god and then when they you know don't know like i like my the rothy shoes i just bought everybody for their birthdays because i'm like (laughs) no you have to own these because they are the most comfortable and then they we talk about that every time we get together oh my god aren't our shoes great so well this is actually speaking about because we mentioned motherhood and like having a baby and stuff but let me ask you if this surprises you there was okay. an article, I think it was in Atlantic, but it was about how women supposedly become more creative after motherhood. Does, oh, I'm sure that, that, yeah, that probably makes sense to you, right? Mm-hmm. I huh. think it's more like you fi- you're finding, so like the measure of, cre- well, first, tell me what you have to tell me about this. Okay, well, they were just talking about how, first they did these studies on rats and found that rat moms catch food four times faster after they have a baby oh, and they're sense. they're more lethal in like catching whatever's alive like it's like they become stealth yes. ninjas <laughs> and- right we do get a little mice <laughs> because mm. they have to feed their babies and then it also just was saying that even though having a child adds more problems to your life you know in the sort of broad sense of problem um, yeah. it, the, having more problems actually makes your brain more resourceful and adaptive. <gasps> oh, this is a really good little, um, like add on to my class on life cycles and aging that I just finished. Uh, when we talked about children, like it was one of the most depressing lectures because he's like, basically all the studies say it just makes you more sad. And more sad? You know, try- well, like not more sad, but it, 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 it increases stress it's it's you know it decreases happiness in a marriage all this stuff it's like none of the studies show like they're wonderful and they make your life rich and but it's the meaning thing it's the meaning that's really good but it's also i think what you're saying like that resourcefulness that it strengthens the uh or or amplifies like the abilities of the mother i mean i know that to be true but it's like, it's it's kind of crazy to me. I mean, have you ever heard the saying like, if you want to get something done, ask a busy mom to do it? Oh God, that is such a great saying. <laughs> because they're just so used to doing everything constantly yeah. and never stopping that they're like, yep, yeah. once one more thing. What but- is one more thing? Oh God. Uh, yeah, that makes sense to me, you know, and what I was, what that made me think of. So I don't know what they use to test creativity on this, but in the studies that I've uh, looked at in the past that, that discuss creativity or use creativity as a, uh, uh, what's the word, like a variable or like a measuring yeah. tool in that, um, mm-hmm. they usually do something along the lines of like giving them five objects and then saying, okay, use these objects to, to do this task. But it's very like ambiguous. Like they don't tell you how the objects go together. It's using, or it's like, use these objects to create as many versions of this thing as you can. Hmm. And I can see how moms do that. Like one that they, one that they've used a few times is, I can't remember what study did this, but, um, it's like a, a matchbox, a candle, a push pin, some thumbtacks, and you have like a, a cork board and you have to somehow like get the candle to stand on top of the – it's like some task like that. And mothers tend to perform better on those things. People who are more creative wow. will perform better on those things. And so I could imagine that when you're a mom and you're like in the doctor's office and you only have a pen and this, you know – phone case and this paper clip, whatever it is that you're like, Hey, let's make a choo-choo train out of this. Like to play with your kids. Like I think a, a good mom is creative in like a million different ways. Oh, we've got this project for school and it's crazy hair day. Okay. Well let's do this and this and this, and this. <laughs> you know, like they're coming up with stuff on the fly 
all the time. Like I see moms being creative all the time. Do you think that this study would be true to any extent for dads? That was going to be what I was going to ask you is, do you think that it changes with dads? Like they're that. Okay. So there's like a, almost like a, a change in motivation, like that rat who was more or mouse, whatever, who was more aggressive with like getting the food and was more, uh, uh, like proficient in, in yeah. hunting. Yeah. Um, I wonder if, because I do think that family drives a lot of men for success, but I wonder mm-hmm. if it's like linked to like hours worked or income or like, well, given that know. it was a rat that it implies that it's just, um, biological rather than emotional. Yeah. So, yeah. oh, good point. I bet it wouldn't be the same I to that, right. at least to that extent, for yeah. men because they're not the ones like carrying the child. Although yeah. I wonder if they've checked um, adoptive moms. If oh, that another good question. I I know the thing with studies is you know like they can only do so much, and then someone right. else has to do the next one. But yeah. we always have a lot of questions, and we're like, hey, get yeah. to work, science. I know. <laughs> We have follow-up questions. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to need you to do another follow-up study on blah, 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 blah. Like, they're wasting their time studying the smells in asparagus, er, pee with asparagus. <laughs> I mean, let study the real things that we care about. I mean, I care about that too, but I think it's, it's not, nice not on this episode. That you might be able to add that to a class that's otherwise depressing for mothers because we need all the help we can get over here. Yeah. That's, I like that. Well, I did learn in my class that women use, utilize more of their brain. Like they, they have hmm. cross hemisphere communication, uh, more than men do. Right. Like men the, are the just like masturbating little... furiously. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, the corpus callosum that c- connects the two hemispheres of your brain is like much stronger and more communicative and like more tuned in women. So it's not all bad news. Well, I mean, the point of the story is women are smarter. <laughs> it's always that's the, the point. point of every story. Yeah. Just the ask end. Matt Neroni. Right. Oh my God. That's so funny. <laughs> the end. Um, okay. Let me move on. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Have you read about how, you know, the shoe company, Ted Baker? Oh my God. I love Ted Baker. Not just shoes, me clothing. Too. Yeah, true. And yeah. amazing clothing and totally my style. And me and my husband love all their clothes. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, well, please don't ruin this line this. for me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, they, what? Okay, <laughs> apparently, Ted uh, had instilled a basically mandatory hug culture. Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> That's so gross. And you know what? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go on. Uh, okay. Well, let me. Who was that lady that got mad whenever I would like. Um, segue into an ad when like, oh I can't remember uh, C- Carla no I don't remember Kayla, was it Lynn no. Lynn no Lynn, not, no 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 Jackie <laughs> F if I know Karen <laughs> we'll Sounds call like her Karen. Jackie 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 I have to tell you something before we talk about Ted Baker's hugs which is that this is the holiday season and you guys have tons of stuff to ship and you have to use stamps.com here is why You can ship right from your house. You get to print the postage out for any letter package, any class of mail, and you just print it out, put it on your thing, and put it in your mailbox, and they come and get it. Like, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to go during this busy time of year out. It's so convenient, and I feel like this is a no-brainer because they have a very good deal for you with a free trial. So here's the deal. If you want to use this convenient service, no-brainer, and never leave your desk, you can enjoy the Stamps.com service with a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale with, without long-term commitments. Go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Brain Candy. That's Stamps.com. Enter Brain Candy. Is this not the perfect time to do a four-week trial? It's that? like the only time. I mean, well, try it any time, but I mean, this is when you're really going to get the most bang for your buck. Yeah, because... I mean, how much crap are you shipping right now? Anyway, so much. Okay, so Ted Baker (laughs) has this weird culture where everyone's supposed to hug. And 
a lot of women felt really, really uncomfortable yeah, because they felt obligated. Do you know where it was? I telling you how at my favorite restaurant, which I won't name, but Sarah, you know, the one I, we've gone there a couple of times. I do know. I know what you're, yes. Yes. Oh yeah. I did tell you. Yes. You asked there me is what a you guy. can do. <laughs> right. There is a new guy there that is like the manager and hugs me. And I don't want to be hugged by him. Mm-mm. And I had to ask Sarah, like, what is your advice? You should tell them what you told me. So I was given this advice from somebody at the clinic who said, we were just <clears> having <throat> this discussion, you know, about, like, how to create, oh, what were we talking about? Who knows? But how to create kind of space when somebody tries to give you a hug and it's not yes. welcome. And uh, they were talking yeah. about how w- women who are uh, Muslim, when they are graduating and they go up to get their diploma and like the hat and sometimes the dean will give a hug to the students and since they're they don't hug the opposite sex yeah. they mm-hmm. culturally like do this thing where they put their hands almost in like a prayer position in front of their chest and yes. it signifies like uh you're creating some personal space between them and you like with your arms there like get like you know Kind of that signals to the other person to not come closer to your personal space, and some for some reason people naturally like copy it when they see it done. And they like mirror you, and so it's almost yeah. like a like prayer uh, like prayer hands in front of your chest, and that it, yeah. almost, it shows like uh, respect and uh, appreciation, and it's like touching your heart and your chest, which is nice. So it like shows caring and like compassion but or care and compassion without uh having to give a hug and it the other person just naturally copies you yeah it's i am utilizing this in a a, a variation of it by making sure that i have either lincoln's crayons or ipad or something that i'm carrying right in front of my chest yeah and whenever I go in, and so far it's been effective. Oh, good. Okay, Sue. So there yeah. you go. You have tried it, and it's putting something in front of your chest. Yeah. Well, and that's. So, I mean, I can't stop. It's thinking. a shame we have to think of these workarounds. I, to be I know. I was thinking the same thing, and I can't stop thinking about how you told me because I have smaller, ch- I have a smaller chest, that that may be why I feel even more uncomfortable hugging people because so much of my body touches them, and you are absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, our friend texted me after she heard us talking about that and said 100% she was screaming at the show saying yes because that she agreed with that. I never, ever thought about, you know, because it's just like the body you have, so you just feel like, okay, well, everybody probably feels like that. Nope. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't get, like, I think that in my experience, anecdotally, a lot of that sort of weird forced hug thing has come from guys that I interpret as being a little bit, um, I don't know if I, maybe like nerdy or awkward and haven't had a lot of experience with women. Mm -hmm. And so that's a way that they feel like they can be close and touchy with women, but it does not come off well. Yeah, it doesn't. That's a good point. I I hate it. I think you're right. Just in my experience, those are the guys that do it. And I'm like, you don't need mm. to do this to get close to women. Yeah. Like, just stop being mm. weird. Let's change the subject. <laughs> okay. All right. Have I was going to say, because, like, my husband's about... not a hugger. And I, I, I don't know very many men. I have more, like, I feel, it's so weird. Like, I feel more comfortable. I'm thinking about, like, our friend Mariana's husband, like, who gives me a kiss every time I see him. He's like a kisser. It's what he does. It's what right. everybody does. We all kiss him back. And it's like a packet. It's cute. It's very European. Yeah, uh, but Landon and... Kevin are both socially um, uh, intelligent. Right. Well, they would never hug me. Like, it's weird because They Kevin, wouldn't do it unless they knew you were comfortable. Right. True. And it would feel weird yeah. if I got, like, a full body hug from Kevin. It would feel more intimate than when he just gives me a kiss. Mm-hmm. Because it feels... But see, like, I feel like mm-hmm. both of those guys know that... They would know if a woman didn't want to. Oh, Yeah. Like if That's I if I'm my saying. body is positioned sideways to you, don't fucking come in for that hug. Yes, I do a sideways don't. like put Ugh. my shoulder to them. <laughs> don't do it, and then they do that weird one arm thing. Get the fuck get off, off me. of me. Get off. 
<sighs> you know I'm mad when I end off with an A. Get off of me. <laughs> Go, Mia. That's what's in, off Mia. 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 Did you did you read about how um, Payless pulled that stunt and took uh, got a storefront on I think it was the Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica, and it was I think the store had formerly been a Gucci or something like that or Versace, mm-hmm. and they made it a Payless, but they called it Pay- Paylessy or Palessy. Oh, that's funny. And created it, made it look like a really high end luxury shoe store. And invited all these influencers to come look at the shoes. And the influencers were all like, these are amazing, super high quality craftsmanship. Oh, my God. Uh, And then, like, but paid hundreds of dollars for the shoes. And then they were like, guess what? They're only $19.99 at Payless. That, I like it. I'm for it. Tell me why. I knew you would. I love it. Because I feel like so much of our... Uh, love or hate or whatever of a product is based on so like how it's perceived based on like perception Mm -hmm. like it's socially constructed like it's not even a real I think the perfect example of that is the brand supreme what's that oh my gosh Susie's been living under a rock ladies and gentlemen (laughs) what is it so supreme is a skater brand that was that came out in the I want to say like 90s or maybe yeah, maybe late nineties, but it has. There, for some reason, skater fashion and skater brands have like taken off, and now these high end lines are doing collaborations with them. It's I think it's a way to connect like like the youth culture with more like high end luxury culture. So Supreme okay. has gone. They they only have I think they only have like thirteen stores worldwide, and they're like a multi. They're like a billion dollar company now. It's crazy. So. It's they're slapping their logo on anything. They sold a Supreme brick. I'm not even kidding, Suze. A brick <laughs> with a Supreme logo on it. I think it retailed for 175. And the thing is, people are buying them. Like the lines out the door are around the block. And as soon as they do a drop or a release of something, people come in, swoop it all up, and they buy it and or they uh, resell it. So like the second the the resale value of this stuff is through the roof. It's like 10 times the original price. And th- I mean, they've, th- they've put their logo on crowbars on like a wire cut, like, like pliers or, or like, um, like, bolt but they're cutters. not, the products aren't exceptional in no, any way. No, they're just like, it's like a red sweatshirt with a Supreme logo on it. And they'll, it'll resell for like a crazy amount, but it is the, it's the, the, they're so limited. The quantities are so limited and the, mm. and it's such a, uh, like out there in everybody's face line right now that people are, are getting like paying a shit ton of money to get their hands on this stuff. But the actual value of these goods is like what you get at home. De- I mean, it's a fucking brick. It costs 75 cents at home Depot. Well, so what is that in the human brain where we're like, this is something I should do? Oh gosh! I mean, maybe it's. I I don't know if it's any different than a Gucci belt. I mean, then you can kind of argue quality mm. and stuff like that. But it's kind of like we said about the shoes. How after you get to a certain dollar amount, anything yeah. after that is like, what's what are you really paying for here? You're paying for the label. You're paying for, you know, what it means and all that. Okay, but is what is what does it mean? Like that you're a important person. Yeah, or that maybe you have money to. It's like yeah, your conspicuous yeah. consumption. Oh, totally. It's like you're sending a message without having, you know, non well, what is it? Nonverbal communication. And you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're Signaling. cool. You got your, you're, you know, exclusive. You got your hands on something that nobody else could. It's right. like anything. People yeah, love gross. that exclusivity thing. You know, what's funny is I notice. Out here in LA, having a dog is kind of a status symbol because totally. it implies that you have enough room and a yard and things like that to accommodate a, a dog. Yeah. And in the rest of the country, having dogs is not necessarily like that. And in some places, it's even the opposite where like, you know, lower income yeah. areas have like tons of pets. You know, you've seen mm-hmm. like pet hoarders and things totally. like that. And it's so weird how in different God, areas, yes. different things mark different signals. Yep. And for a while, it was like the breed of dog. I think all the time there's like a fashionable breed, you know? 
Yeah, that is weird. Where you'll see like certain, well, for a while it was the French Bulldog, I think, you know, that's like. Yeah, it's very photographable. Yeah, too. or like the, the Labradoodle or whatever. That reminds well, I me. I today. That, uh, I watched, oh my God, the best new series on Netflix, Suze. <laughs> oh my God, everyone loves it. Dogs. It's so good. Oh my God. I just heard somebody talking about it or I saw something on Twitter that was like, oh my gosh, you have to watch this and bring your Kleenexes and yeah, bring did your you tissues. Did you watch it? Oh, I watched the first You're episode. Oh my God. It's so good. I was totally crying. It's amazing. So it, it, it's like a, I don't, I think maybe eight episodes or I don't know how many, but every episode they feature uh, somebody's a story about a dog and it's kind of like the person story and it parallels the dog story. And this episode Mm -hmm. was about a girl who was, I think, 12 years old who had very severe epilepsy and to the point where she, when she was a little kid, maybe like four or so, she was sleeping in her bed, had a seizure, rolled, and it, during the seizure flipped over onto her face and almost suffocated and died because she couldn't breathe because she was having a seizure and her face was against a pillow. So the family finally got a dog that is trained to alert Mm -hmm. when she is about to have a seizure. Suze, I knew that dogs, these trained dogs, like, oh my God, I might cry talking about this. There's like a 75% chance. (laughs) That's so cute. So I knew that dogs um, were, you know, really good at at smelling things and really good at like, you know, bomb sniffing dogs, all that stuff. I was aware of that. Yeah, of course. I never really understood how they do it, especially with conditions like seizures and stuff like that. Holy... Shit. Do you know how they do it? No, I don't. Oh, right. It's like a thing that we all just accept that dogs do, but we yeah, don't really know right, how they right. do it. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm smart and I didn't even like, I'm well read and I look at research of everything. And how do I not know how they do this? So what mm-hmm. they do is they take, like they train these dogs since they're pop, like brand first thing they start doing these trainings with, with the dogs and they take an item that well, they they go to people who have seizures, have seizure seizure disorders, and they get their clothes that they are wearing when they have seizures, and they what? yes they the odor that so they'll take a doll or oh, a, a, a dog yeah. toy and they'll wrap it in the t shirt or whatever item like they'll use an item of somebody who recently had a seizure and they'll train the dog to respond to that item, to that smell, that odor. So the smell, the scent that a person releases when they have a seizure has enough chemicals in it that your body produces that you can take that item, give it to a dog who is a, a, like a different person. It doesn't have to be, that's the craziest part, oh, is that wow, it's not that. the actual owner. It's just a person with seizures. And it's the same, just like fear is the same chemicals, seizures are the same chemicals for everybody. So they use that item and it trains the dog to respond. And then the person who's the trainer will fall on the floor and mimic a seizure and be holding the item. And so the dog will be trained to bark and, and, you know, put their hands on the person or whatever it is. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. It's so sweet. Ah. And it like mm. the dogs know in like a second and they're so smart. And you see this dog and you're like, oh my God, you're smarter than like, it, like you feel like this dog has the intelligence of at least a 10 or 12 year old child, like plus yeah. knowledge that we don't even know. Like, oh, and then like the dog is sleeping with the girl. It's like he knew that this was his job and like he's, oh, and the trainer was like, this girl had so many seizures that the person who was the trainer for this dog said, we had to find a dog who had a really resilient personality, who loves to work so much because he's going to be so busy doing this. He can never get bored of this job. So it's like they find the perfect personality to match with the person and based on their condition. Oh, it was like so heartwarming and so beautiful. And I was like, if everybody is saying like that, they, they just feel like dogs are too good for this world. Like they're too good for humans. Even they're, they're, just they're so, saving us. Yeah. In more ways and than animals in general. Yeah. And it's like, except for that tiger that's killing the 12 Yeah, Except people. for that one. But luckily we have CK obsession. 
Oh, so it was, it was just like the sweetest thing I had ever seen. But there was one scene in that movie that I, I had to write. I wrote it down because I had to talk to you about it. It had nothing really to do with the dogs, but more about human behavior. And should we be doing more of this? So this, this little girl lived in a neighborhood where a lot of the houses had kids her age. So she'd been really excited about getting this dog for so long. Probably told all the kids in the neighborhood about it. And when they found out what dog they were getting, they did like a FaceTime with the dog and everything. And she, she had a picture of it and it was so cute and so sweet. And she was so excited about it. She went around to all of the neighbor's house and like she introduced the dog, like the picture of the dog showed one friend. And then she was like, Hey, you can come around and show everybody else with me if you want. So that person, and, and they, Together, all of her friends went door to door around the neighborhood and showed, like, the, the kid would open the door and she'd be like, guess what? My dog's coming in four days and look at the picture. And every single door that opened and every single kid who saw the picture gave, like, the exact right response and was like, oh, my God, he's so cute. I can't mm. wait. I'm so happy for you. And in my head, I was like, why did we ever stop doing that? What look at yeah. these kids? Why that is community right there. That's connection. That's love. That's like, oh, I'm gonna cry again. Jesus. I love when you cry. It was so sweet. And I was like, what she's doing is she's going around and she's being she's showing something that she's excited about that's going to impact her life in a positive way. And, and her people are just happy for yes, her. Yes. And they're seeing it, and in the moment, they're like, oh, my God, I love that you're getting this. And she felt the, – the, the part that I think we lose as adults is that feeling that we can show our friends things that we're excited and proud of. And we can mm -hmm. all share in each other's accomplishments, and we should do that. And it should be like, hey, come with me. Come on. I'm going to come show everybody else this. And I was like, this is – we need to enjoy more of these things. We need to celebrate more of that stuff. And maybe that's like what, you know, we need to just do baby announcements in person almost. Mm. I just loved the human connection that I saw. And I just felt like, oh, we should learn from these kids. No, I need to watch it. Oh, Suze, you're going to be, and guess what kind of dog it was? Oh, my God. A the doodle. A golden doodle. Dang it. Suze, so, right, well, we you, you will die. Okay, well, that's a good note to go out That'll on. be my homework for yes, today. Yes, homework. <laughs> watch dog dogs. It's, oh my God, so good. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.